Previously, on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've talked about interaction with the virtual function bus and how we need to describe how atomics interact with the virtual function bus via ports and that we have connectors between them and that the information that is shared between ports is described by an interface. It's all nice, but it doesn't really tell us anything, does it? Let's go find out more about this topic. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from VectorGB. Welcome to this intermediate episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, episode I3, how to describe a software port. In this episode, we're going to get deeper into the software design process and look at the kinds of ports we can describe and how the information flow at a port is described. This is part of a short sequence of episodes where we are taking a much deeper look at the Autozar Classic platform methodology covering both software and communication design. We're picking up directly from where we finished in episode I2, how does ECU software communicate? So if you haven't seen that episode, I recommend you watch it before you continue with this one. Before we really get going though, let's just have a think about how information is traditionally used in embedded systems. So sensors that we use in embedded systems often output a voltage called an electrical signal, or, or just signal for short, which relates to the quantity that they're measuring. And as the quantity changes, the signal will, will change. The voltage will go up and down. So if we're measuring a temperature, typically the, the higher the temperature gets, the, the higher the uh, voltage will go and the lower the temperature gets, the, the lower the, the temperature will go. Now this varying voltage is, is nice and it's what we get from our sensor, our transducer, if you want to use a technical term. Um, ECUs at Embedded Electronics then use a device called an analog to digital converter. So we have a continuously varying electrical analog signal, but obviously in our software, we need numbers that correspond to that. So we use analog to digital converter, and this is a little electronic device, ADC for short, and it converts that continuously varying signal, at each input into numbers for use by the software that we want to run on our microcontroller. Now, ADCs actually take a finite amount of time to measure a quantity or sample it, and also to send it to a microcontroller. And this leads to a concept of a sampling period. And if you go and do a control engineering degree or electronics engineering degree, you'll learn all about Nyquist-Shannon uh, criteria for sampling data to make sure you get good quality samples for a varying quantity. So our ADC periodically on a fixed time base spits out a number which is able to be used in our microcontroller in our, in our software. And so we have this kind of flow from temperature to numbers that could end up in software. Fantastic, so that's our, our quick aside. Now, as it happens, atomics run on a periodic schedule inside ECUs. And then this means, of course, that they often provide information in a similar way to an ADC. So they'll spit out a number each time they get executed. So there's this kind of periodic pulse of information again. So where we have an information flow that is similar to samples from an ADC, the P port we call a sender and the R port we call a receiver. And we can provide then a graphical notation to help us distinguish between them. We draw that arrow left to right that I, I showed you just now, and we take it and we apply it to the ports. So sender is kind of sending information out and receivers are kind of grabbing information in. So we, we can really think that we're kind of replicating that arrowhead in terms of how we denote the, the ports. Now, this is just giving us a direction for the flow of information to, to align with the, the direction the arrows are pointing in. And, and the, what we've defined is a sender-receiver interface, or SR interface for short, that we've assigned to these ports. The information flow at a port with an SR interface is defined in terms of data elements. So we think about a data element, it 
you, again, typically corresponds to a, a number, but we'll get to that again later. Now, each data element we can think really is analogous to an electrical signal. So a data element is equivalent roughly to a, a virtual wire that we want to send between software. And there's actually no limit on the number of data elements that we can assign to a single sender-receiver interface. So we need to have at least one, and that's a useful convention is that you have one, but you could have two, five, 10, 20, a million, even if you wanted to, It'd be really difficult to work with. So a useful convention is to have a single data element. Um, but that's not everything we want to do in software because sometimes a stream of information like we get from an ADC doesn't fit to a problem that we're trying to solve. So for example, if we have one or more atomics that need to request a specific behavior is provided by another piece of software. So we have a, a service and a request for, for behavior kind of maps to a, a service. So for example, we might have a calculator and some software might ask that calculator function to please add two, three, and four. And the calculator will go off crunch some numbers and come back very quickly, hopefully, with the answer is nine. So in this case, we can say that we have a client or an R port, which is requesting a server or a P port to execute a client server operation or operation for short. And in this case, we were talking about a, a client server interface. And, and the request, of course, that we're sending may contain information for the operation. So the numbers that we want to add together. And of course, the server may provide a result back to the client. So the answer of performing the addition. And the client server interface or CS interface for short is used to describe the information that relates to a specific operation that uh, a server can provide us, a service makes available. So we need to know a little bit more information for operations because we might need information from a client to perform a service. And because a service can a, a server can perform information provide information back to a client. Operations are described in terms of arguments and those arguments have a direction. So for our simple example, we have an operation which is add and our arguments then, we, we need to think about our arguments, what information is going in which direction. So we have our summands, okay? The, the numbers that we want to add together, these have a direction of in, they're provided from the client into the, the server for it to perform its service. And these numbers are not being modified by the, the calculator by our, our service. We get back an answer. So we get an out argument, it, or we tell our, describe our operation to have an out argument, which is the answer. And this is the information that is given as a result of performing the service. So it's returned by it to use a, a software piece of terminology. It's also possible and actually fairly common to have in out arguments. And an in out argument is information that is needed to be uh, needed to perform a service and also is returned by it and may be modified by the server. Okay, so we maybe have a, a state that we provide alongside a, a number of other things and our server comes back and says, oh yeah, that state needs to actually change to a, a different state because of something that, that's happened when I've calculated the or performed my, my operation on your data. So, as a summary, in the Autosar classic platform methodology, we can describe information flows that match streams of values, like the output of an analog to digital converter, and we use sender-receiver interfaces to do this. We can also describe information flows that are requests for behavior and responses to those requests. And we use client-server interfaces to describe these. And it's worth mentioning that other information flows are possible as well that we are not going to get into 
in the context of this series of episodes. We then, though, add further detail to the information flow according to the kind of interface that we're using. So if we're using a sender-receiver interface, we define one or more data elements that correspond to the information items that are being transferred. And with a client-server interface, we define operations and the arguments that relate to each operation, including the direction of those arguments. We are going to give you some further sources of information on ECU software design. Again, our journey into the Autosar Classic platform methodology continues. We will look at how information is described at different levels within the Autosar methodology. We'll look at how the Autosar virtual function bus concept gets implemented in a real ECU as well in further intermediate episodes. If you can't wait, please visit our website to find articles and webinars on the Autar Classic software system design process in Prevision and DaVinci Developer Classic. You'll also find there our free e-learning resources and you can find details of our technical training where you can learn about all the other kinds of interfaces that we are not going to talk about in Engineering the Jigsaw. Please though, let us know if you'd like to know how to approach software and system design in the Autozar Adaptive platform. That's something we've got an idea might be interesting for some of you. So if that is interesting, or if you've got an idea for another topic we should cover or questions on this episode, please drop us an email to our engineering.jigsaw at vector.com email address. Of course, feel free to leave us a comment wherever you've found this, this video. We, we're very good at watching the comments and, and replying to them, you, you may have noticed. I'd like to thank my colleagues, Mahmoud Ibrahim and Alexander Ginnett from Vector GB, who've helped in preparing some of the information that we're included in this episode and also providing reviews of, of the content. My name is Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. We'll see you for another episode soon. <laughs>